Now let us look at the geometry. It's the same as I presented before, but now with geometrical, geometrical shapes. This is the geometry of dough. I said it before, it's just a simple, simple circle. And this circle represents the oneness or the wholeness. It also represents, represents the holy of everything. You can write holy with double U and with double L or without the double U and the double L. It means exactly the same. Holy science or holy Bible, it's all about the holiness, the wholeness. It's also sacred or secret. It refers to the same. And you can even say it's about healing because healing, you make somebody whole again and then you become more healthy. So healing, holiness, whole, sacredness, unity, it's all about the same. It's all about this very sacred, secret, ancient healing circle. It's one over one. And of course, I represent it with a big circle. That was the geometry of dough. Now we add another circle. And when we see that the circumference of each circle goes exactly through the heart of the other circle. This is also a holy geometry. And this is the holy geometry of C. And this is the duality because we see two circles. And in the middle, we find this remarkable shape. It's here. And that shape is called the Fesica Pisces. It's uh, Pesis is a word for fish, a Latin word for fish. So it looks like a fish too. And it refers to Jesus. And I will explain later who Jesus is because it's somebody else than most people think. This is the symbol for duality. But this is also the symbol for duality. The symbol for yin and yang or the symbol of Tao. So this is the geometry of one over two where the wholeness is split into two circles. And this is the symbol I give to that. I saw that before. So this is one circle. We add another circle and a third circle. And still we see that the circumference of the circle goes straight to the hearts of the other circles. And this is also a very sacred, holy geometry. It's the holy geometry of La. And it is the Trinity. And the Trinity we find when we connect the hearts of the circles, like here. Then we find a perfect triangle. And this is another way to find a, a triangle. Or you can say this symbol. If you look at cathedrals, you find this symbol in very many places. And this too. It's all related to the geometry of creation. So it's one over three. And this is the symbol I use to show the Trinity. A circle with a triangle within itself. One circle, two circle, three circles. Now we add a one extra. This is not holy geometry. This is not in balance. Add one more. Still it's not in balance. It's not in balance. Whoa. Now we get something. This is in balance again. And this is the holy geometry of soul. Where we find six circles in the outer ring. Surrounding the first circle in the middle. And I call that the hexad. The hexad means the whole of six. One over six. You can also show it like this. If you connect the hearts of the circles in the outer ring, you get this shape. And that shape is called the hexagon. And the hexagon is a really beautiful shape because when we look at the honeycombs, we see all hexagons connected together. This can be uh, uh, made into infinity. It's really beautiful. Here we see the hexagon within a circle. But when we connect the lines, the, the corner lines, the corners I mean, then we get this shape. And this is another beautiful ancient symbol. It's the Seal of Solomon. Some people call it the Star of David, but the original name is the Seal of Solomon. And I use the Seal of Solomon within a circle to represent the hexad, the whole of six. Six is a beautiful number. Some people are afraid of it by 666. But then it's the opposite of the truth. Six is a really beautiful number. So one is Do. Two is Si. Three is La. Then we continue. Six around in the circle, in the outer ring. Six is Sol. Then we continue. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. This is not holy yet. Because still a number of circles are lacking. So we continue. This, 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 
And now we find another holy geometry. This is the geometry of Fa, where we find 12 circles in the new outer ring. Geometry of Fa, and it's the dozen. Dozen means the whole of 12. 1 over 12. Here you see that the inner circle has 12 leaves, so to say. But the outer circles not. Some have 4, some have 6. So they're not completed. Here we see a very beautiful symbol in which each circle has 12 leaves. And it's the flower of life. I represent this, I use this symbol to represent the whole of 12, the dozen, where we divide the full circle into 12 equal parts. Now we continue. I will not continue with all the circles because that will take too long. But now we arrive at the level of me. And there is a new outer ring now. And that outer ring has 24 circles. If you count them, you find exactly 24. And this is the symbol I use to represent the whole of 24. We don't have a word for that, that's a pity, but it's the whole of 24. 24 slices in a circle. That's also a beautiful, beautiful shape, because if we accentuate these circles, these 13 circles, then we get another beautiful symbol. This is called the cube of Metatron. And within these, these uh, lines, because now each heart of each circle is connected to each other heart. That's why we get this shape. That's easy to draw. Within that basic shape, we find all kinds of two-dimensional shadows of three-dimensional perfect bodies. They call the platonic bodies. In my previous lectures, I talked more about them. Some people call this the cube, but it's in fact the hexahedron. This is the dodecahedron, this is the icosahedron, and that is the octahedron. One half of it is the pyramid shape. And here we find the tetrahedron, and if you combine it with another tetrahedron uh, within a circle, then you create this beautiful circle, this beautiful shape. Now we see the shadow of a three-dimensional star, tetrahedron. And when you look at the shadow, that is exactly like this shadow, where we see again the seal of Solomon. This is just a very little bit, little part of the uh, holy uh, geometry, but it's important to understand it. Here we see two shapes of the star tetrahedron. The one to the left is the yang shape, is the male shape, and the one to the left, uh, to the right, sorry, is the yin shape. And these are the light bodies. These are the energies that go out from our bodies, and they're called the merkaba. In the final part, in the sixth part, I will talk more about this. Now we go to the highest level, or better to say the lowest level. That's the geometry of Re. Again, we didn't draw all the circles in between, but when we arrive at this level, then there are 48 circles in the outer ring. Again, a doubling. And I use this symbol to, to refer to the whole of 48. It started with 1, and it goes all the way up to here, to Re, to the level of 48. 1, 2, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. This process from Do, Si, La, Sol, Fa, Mi to Re, that is the Re of creation. The creation starts at the top, at the oneness, at the wholeness, and it goes all the way to the level of Re. It goes down. That's the Re of creation, from top till down. But the other way around, from down to up, bottom up, is the stairway of ascension. And that is the stairway we can take with our consciousness. We can create, at the end, the consciousness of the whole, of wholeness. That is what we can do here, in our incarnations on this planet.